Welcome to Leaders in Action. I'm Robin Trimingham of the Olderhood Group, and my guests today are Olderhood CEO Bill Story and Indirjit Singh, uh, ICAO Airport Consultant and former CEO of New Delhi's Indira Gandhi International Airport. Today we're talking about the ways in which your life journey can impact your approach to leadership. Welcome, gentlemen. Namaste. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Robin. And uh, thank you, Bill, for inviting me. It's my honor to be a participant in your uh, series, which uh, I guess uh, is gathering a lot of interest all over the world. So far, it's doing very well. Yeah, we've been very blessed by this opportunity to chat with everybody, including really experienced and wonderful people like yourself. Um, let me just jump straight into this here. Uh, in, Indy, I, I, I think it's okay to call you Indy? Where did you get this? I have my sources. <laughs> okay. okay, and you know who gave me this name? I've, I was studying in Berkeley in California, and... Uh, my name was a bit uh, tongue twister. So Indiana Jones, you know him? I do. So he is known as Indy, so they coined my name as Indy. Anyway, thank you very much for remembering my nickname. Thank you. <laughs> well, it's our pleasure. Uh, listen, you have been commenting in some very highly regarded aviation journals lately. And so I thought we would invite you on this segment today, which is going to be the first in a series, uh, to get so everybody can get to know you a little bit better. So uh, tell, start by telling us, how do you view your role in the world today? Oh, that's a big question. Role in the world. Okay, fine. Thank you. I'm, I'm flattered. Uh, okay, I'll tell you, I actually always have this conviction that I belong to the world. Well, that's a kind of a profound statement. Tell us, why do you feel that way? Okay, fine. I, I must get into a little more detail. Actually, my parents were traveling from London, my dad who finished his course in as a bar at law from the Lincoln's Inn, they were heading on his first appointment to British Somaliland. My mom was carrying me and uh, I was born on a ship called Chusan, which is an Australian P&O company's flag carrier ship. And uh, halfway through, I think somewhere near the Gulf region, I'm told I was born because my birth certificate says those coordinates. So it was in high seas, away from any territorial sea area. or And uh, I was made in, I would say, in London, delivered in the <laughs> ship. And uh, I landed up when I was two days old in uh, British Somaliland. So uh, what, what can I say? I just say that, yes, I belong to the world. You've had a very, very interesting and varied uh, career uh, around the world. And the, um, so... Um, Describe to us or tell us what, um, what's your approach uh, to leadership? Okay, I mean, uh, just to link with my earlier answer, I enjoy a sense of freedom from any reservations, ambiguities, and any preconceived notions about anything, any country, any part of the world, and any people. So I like that famous aviator and author called Richard Park, and I feel like a bird and not confined for any territorial boundaries. In my professional career until date, as probably you know, I've served in several countries like Africa, Asia, Middle East, and South America. And I found the adaptability to new places, people, cultures have made me what I am today. So to answer your question, uh, that was ingrained in me that uh, I I'm, let's say, boundless. Yeah. Uh, I can go anywhere. You you send me to you call me tomorrow to uh, your place, uh, Bermuda. I'll come and within next morning I'll be at work without even considering yeah. that I belong to a new country. Yeah. As I see, a leader basically is an influencer. People look upon him to guide, to motivate. Yeah. I tend to lead by example. High in integrity prudent, humane, contemporary in thinking, open-minded, wholesome knowledge, and an unending quest for learning, 
confident and courageous. That's what I feel. A performer and a team leader or a team player. Mm. So, uh, you know, with, I, I feel these are the essential features. If one can get even 50% of them, I can't claim to be all that I have mentioned. But if I'm even closer to that, I think I have, I have done something worthwhile. Because a leader should essentially be an optimistic with an open mindset, a positive outlook. I think that's very important, Bill. Yeah. And never say die attitude. And perseverance and should be leading by example. He should be action oriented and not a preacher. Yeah. So I, I think if all this comes into any one of us, we are then the leaders. You know, I think you have a very profound approach to leadership and your place in the world. You know, it's a very cutting edge to just view us as all one world and all one people and we all help each other. Can you give us an example of how your leadership plays out in your regular life? Maybe something from your time when you were CEO of the Indira Gandhi International Airport. Uh uh, you, you probably know a lot about uh, Delhi Airport. Uh, it is the only hypersensitive rated airport in the country, which means the threat perception is very high. So it's a fairly large airport. And as you know, airports are hotbeds. There is something going on all the time. One morning, I was heading towards the airport. And right under the flight path, uh, you know, we have this RT, radio telephone. So I, I heard from the tower, the air traffic control tower, and my uh, uh, chief fire uh, person, the chief of the fire station, that smoke detected on arrival. So smoke detected, that was the word, that was the alert. So I, since I was under the flight path, I looked up and I saw a 747, Boeing 747 oh. coming <laughs> uh, with, with smoke, with smoke on one of the engines. <laughs> so as I was away from the airport, just for four minutes by, by uh, two minutes, actually, I detected that there was a spark along with the smoke, which probably the air traffic control and the fire station could not observe. It was on the rear side of the engine. Yeah. So I'm authorized to intervene as the CEO or the head of the uh, so I intervened on my RT and introduced myself as Alpha Alpha. And I said, smoke, yes, flame detected too. And okay. I instantly gave a command how to combat fire. Yeah. Now, as That's you great. know, uh, Robin and Bill, there are five, six ways of combating fire. And the answer from the, air, the chief of uh, fire was instant will go, which means will comply with. Mm -hmm. So there was no question of any argument, discussion, debate, yes, no, because if you can't approach an aircraft on fire within two minutes, it said yeah. better don't That's go. That's amazing. That's because amazing. There would, there would yeah. be nothing left. Mm -hmm. Passengers yeah. would be gone, aircraft, yeah. and the collateral damage, damage to other aircraft which are in the vicinity. Mm -hmm. And at an airport like Delhi, there would probably be 40, 50 aircraft parked yeah. tip to tip. Yeah, well, so, to cut it short, my driver, who happened to be the Air Force Corporal, a daring driver, he took the car on the runway and I was along with him under the burning aircraft, the burning wing of an aircraft. Wow. And I could even hear on my RT some firemen saying, uh, chief under the air, uh, air, aircraft, chief under the aircraft, you know, like it was a motivation for them, not yeah. to save the plane, but to save me too. And as luck would have had it, mm -hmm. after rolling about 1,500 meters, the aircraft came to a standstill, covered completely with foam. 270, mm -hmm. 271 people came out of the emergency chutes. Everybody was saved. Wow. The well, and we announced mm -hmm. rewards for everybody, out-of-turn promotions for everybody, mm -hmm. and uh, you know foreign trainings, etc. Yeah. And that's how my, my uh, colleagues benefited out of it. I think we're going to leave people hanging there on the edge of the cliff so that they're going to want to watch the next segment. You've been watching Leaders in Action, produced by the Olderhood Group. Join us again for more segments like this.